Hello and welcome to this episode of For Your Consideration. My name is Guy and today we're looking at sandbox style GMing. Now there's a few different types of GMing that are out there. You've got the railroad GM, you've got the sandbox GM, you've got the module GM, you've got the campaign GM. I'm a campaign GM. I like to plan out big epic campaigns that center the characters right in the middle of it. Sandbox style GMing, however, is a different approach and is nothing better or worse than any of the other methods. It's just a different way of doing it. So how is it different and how can you use it to plan your next session or sessions moving forward? Well, when we look at it, we look at obviously planning, we look at adventures and we look at flexibility because that's what Sandbox is all about. It's about flexibility and it's flexibility of the player's character's choices, the player's choices and your choices. So it's a very exciting, very different space to be in. So let's move forward, hopefully. <laughs> right, so when it comes down to planning, there's no main campaign. There's no central plot that you've worked out meticulously with all its different beats and all that kind of stuff. There's no giant evil force who's trying to take over the planet or the galaxy or the universe. There's just stuff happening. Simulationists love this type of game because there's all sorts of things happening all over the place. And the players can get involved in whichever stories they want to or not entirely up to them. So in uh, so there's no main campaign. Adventures are independent. Adventures are independent, right? I'm still getting used to this idea. The adventures are completely independent. This means one adventure to the next. There's no link. This adventure doesn't lead me to that adventure. I rescue a princess in this adventure. Next week we save a kingdom from an army. The kingdom has nothing to do with the princess at all. There's no link. There's no causal link. We do this so that it causes that to happen. Maybe, occasionally, one adventure might cause another adventure. We burn down the orc village, so the next adventure is the orcs coming to attack us. Yes, that certainly can happen. But it lasts for one or two or three adventures and then it dies down and we never again hear from those orcs there's no larger implication to the this the the narrative it just it is what it is so the challenge we have is how to start our campaign where the world is quite literally available the players can do literally anything they like how do you start your campaign well, there is that video that I did on, on six ways of starting your campaign. Or, uh, I don't know if it was, anyway, there was a video on that, on that. The idea is that because they can do anything, they can go anywhere, your first adventure is an introductory adventure to the idea that they can go anywhere, that they can do anything that they like. So I would place them in a battle that finishes in that first adventure. It's done and dusted, and there's nothing that continues beyond that. So maybe it's a border skirmish, or it's a ship that's attacked by pirates. I'd make it a neutral space, and that gives the players, because their characters end up being in a completely neutral situation, it gives those players the opportunity to go in any direction they like. And you need to let them know that they can do that. You need to say, this is a sandbox game. You determine where are we going. Now, there's no causal link, so you don't have to worry about keeping track of things. Seeding, which is something that we're going to talk about in a little bit, is also something that's different. Because there's no causal link, there's no long-term campaign, seeding is really now just opportunities for you to throw out adventures as you need. So when it comes to adventures, we then look at the villains and the henchmen that you use. They are episodic, and by that I mean... They're here for this adventure, they die in this adventure, they are defeated in this adventure. Maybe they come back in three or four sessions time and you defeat them again and then they're gone. There's no long-term nemesis, there's no one power actively working against the group that will ever overcome or be overcome by the group. They will face villains and henchmen and the bad guys will be as varied as they possibly could be. Now if this sounds familiar, what we're talking about here is television from the 1980s. Television was very, very reluctant to create long-term campaigns. They were very reluctant for one episode of television to relate to the next. So if you watched, say, Magnum P.I., if we're going really far back, or you watched the early years of Star Trek The Next Generation, 
or anything along those lines, each episode was self-contained. And what happened in one episode very seldom had any impact on anything that happened later on. It was only in the, late, well, the mid-90s that we started to have longer-term game plans, longer-term um, stories within our TV shows, which if you didn't watch episode one, you wouldn't really pick up on. But again, they were still nervous. And the reason why they were nervous was because they were worried that viewers who tuned into a show halfway through the season, if it was a long-running campaign like Game of Thrones is today, the viewer would go, oh, I don't know what's going on, so I'm going to skip it. It was before we had things like video on demand, Netflix, DVD box sets, all that kind of stuff. Way before then, where people literally had no way of catching up on what they'd missed. It was just played out and it was gone. And they wouldn't be able to find out what had happened before. So it was very, very, very insular, very isolated kind of narratives. And what's nice about that is, and, I, and this is not only just nostalgia, is that occasionally you watch a show from that period because you know you're not having to invest 12 hours to watch the entire season. You can just watch an episode and go, yeah, <laughs> it was an entertaining episode. There was no real link from one to the other. Now we've moved to the exact extreme end of the, the, the spectrum where we no longer even have episodes coming out per week. We now get the entire season up front. So you can just binge watch the entire thing because that's where we've now moved to. We'd rather watch for 12 hours than break it out over 12 weeks or whatever the cycle might be. So in those shows, your villains have no reason to stay around. There's no reason for them to take any long-term, long-term plans because they're not going to be there for very long. <laughs> Downtime is entirely player-driven. What do you want to do while you're not fighting this week's villain? Next week's villain you don't know about because they haven't yet appeared because it's sandbox and we don't know where you're going. So in your downtime, what are you doing? The player now decides on downtime. You can obviously, as the GM, watch the tempo of the game and go, well, they've been sitting around the table for 12 minutes now not doing anything. They're kind of shopping and there's nothing going on. Okay, I can throw in a random act which will start the next adventure. But generally speaking, downtime is definitely player driven. You let them explore it for as long as they like until they go and find the next adventure. They need to actively go and look for it. That's sandbox after all. It's not a campaign where there's going to be event triggers like the big bad doing something. Generally, it's the players who find the adventures. They go and make the adventures themselves. Modules fit incredibly well into a sandbox. If you pick up something that's set in a desert type of environment, well, you can make sure that the player's characters end up near a desert-like effect. When they walk into the desert, you can open up the module, play through the module, and then move on. Because the module won't have any ramifications on anything else happening in the world, because it's insular. It is episodic. So you can then also explore themes. This week, the theme that we're looking at is the triumph of the... Uh, uh, we're looking at bravery as a theme and what does bravery mean next week we're looking at the idea of honor or the week after we're looking at the idea of marriage marriage is our theme or comedy is our theme or horror or so you can change themes throughout it's episodic it's sandbox it really doesn't matter there's no idea there's no drive of a central theme all the way through you don't need it because you're just going wherever the winds happen to blow you. There's nothing wrong with that. It's absolutely fine. It actually allows you to explore different ideas, to test out different types of adventures. So it's a great avenue for you as a game master to try out different things and go, well, yeah, last week we kind of had a bit of a horror theme. So this week I'm going to go for that or I'm going to go for this. I'm going to try that. I'm going to try this. So you can really cut your teeth on different things. And there really isn't any problem with that. Now, flexibility is what it's all about. And the benefit of Sandbox is that if you don't have a stable player base, so you've got players that show up hopefully every week, but sometimes they skip a week, it's not a problem. In Sandbox, no one character has a long-running thread. No one character has this bigger arc. There is no bigger arc for them to have. So whether they're there for this week's adventure or not, it doesn't matter. Next week, their character can arrive and pick up and go as they um, now meet up with the party and continue forward. So you can have players dropping in and dropping out. It really doesn't make that much difference because there isn't a bigger bigger plan. The outcomes are also irrelevant because there's no giant campaign, 
if the characters succeed at this adventure or they fail at this adventure, it really makes no never mind. It means that, well, they failed, sure, they don't get the reward, they move on. It doesn't mean that they've failed so now the entire empire collapses because that was part of your grand plot, your master plot that your super nemesis has worked out and that they have now taken over the kingdom. Oh, if that happens in the background, it happens in the background because of you as the game master wanting to drive that narrative. But in a sandbox space, it really doesn't have that much impact on the players. They don't care. They're going to move on to another place anyway and try a different adventure. They're going in for a dungeon crawl or they're going for this or they're going for that. So the outcomes don't have that much critical nature to them. And so you don't have to worry too much about trying to link things together. And again, there's that freedom of mood. So you're flexible about, well, I wanted it to be scary, but it's turned into funny. It doesn't matter because my whole uh, my campaign is just this mishmash. So you can really determine is that outcome that's negative, really negative? Or is it, ah, it's a loss. You don't get paid. Moving on. Next story. Here we go. And we try again, etc., etc. So the mood at your table is really going to be, well, pretty much optimistic as the characters bounce from one place to another place to another place. The other side of this mood, this freedom of mood, is that your players are not trying to figure out these bigger stories. They're not sitting there going, this NPC mentioned something about that kingdom that we came out of, and I know that that links to this because of that, because of this, because of that. How does it all link? They're not going to be doing that. They don't need to because they know that these are very compartmentalized spaces. So your sandbox environment is demanding on you as the game master. It's really demanding on you because this planning and these adventures, this flexibility, there is no link. There's no driving matter. So you are totally dependent on your own creativity to come up with these different adventures. And yes, I suggest you go and look at the four different types of adventures and the sub-adventures, which we've now discovered, and look at and see, okay, well, I had a thwarting adventure last time, so let's do a delivery this time, let's do a this, this, etc., etc. And then you can throw it out to the players and they can pick it up and take it, or they can go in a different direction and do whatever it is that they want. You don't have to worry about seeding too much because, well, the characters are just exploring wherever they happen to go. So Sandbox definitely allows you as the game master to try out different things, try out different adventures, try out different monsters, different villains, different scenarios. Absolutely, you are in a safe space. You don't have to worry about long-term planning, etc. What you do have to worry about is that your short-term adventures need to work out. And here's something that's actually quite tricky with sandboxing. You need to make sure that your adventures terminate. Because if you start an adventure and it leads to another adventure, which leads to another adventure, which leads to another adventure, you're no longer in sandbox. You're now in a campaign. And a campaign has a whole bunch of different demands in order for it to feel satisfactory at its conclusion. With the sandbox type of game, the conclusion is just the last adventure. There's no final say, there's no final showdown with a big bad monster. It's basically when everyone goes, you know what, I think we've run our course. I think we are done. Just like this video. So if you uh, agree with me on sandboxing as being a wonderful vehicle to test out your skills, test out your abilities, Hit that like button, hit the subscribe button if you want to see more of this kind of video. Let me know in the comments below what you thought and whether you agree or not. And do you use sandboxing? Is your adventures very compartmentalized, not linked to one another? And what are your experiences with that? What are the pros and what are the cons, do you think? So that someone who's getting into this hobby of ours can look at that and go, well, yeah, absolutely, maybe, maybe I'll try a sandboxy sort of style for the first six months, then I'll work into a campaign or into a railroad. Let me let me think about those. If you want me to talk about campaign style versus railroad as well, let me know below. I can only give you videos if you tell me what videos you want. Anyway, until next time, I wish you and yours the very happiest of weekends. <laughs>